Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscherini, a Ferrari unit on forces and their effects. Today, we're going to see how to measure forces. So, uh, during this lesson, we're going to see how to measure forces using an instrument known as newtometers. We're going to learn how to use the correct unit of force. And actually, in, in another lesson, we're going to see about the difference between mass and weight. In our previous lesson, we have seen what forces are. So we have saw the definition of forces, we have saw how we can represent forces, some example of forces, and what is the effect of forces. Now, forces are part of a bigger family of what we call a physical quantity. And to better understand, and it's really important that you understand really well what is this concept. So let's look at a description of a person. Now, if you want to describe the physical appearance or the general appearance of this person, you might refer to things like um, this person's intelligence, its sense of humor, the height, the temperature, the body temperature of this person, the shoe size, and the weight. Now, uh, whenever you uh, use these um, uh, words to describe someone, you have to think, okay, but is it something that we can measure? Okay, so that is the big question. Can you measure all of these? Okay, because the answer to the question, can you measure it, is actually the answer to the question whether or not this quantity is a physical quantity. Because this is our definition. A physical quantity is a property, is a feature of something that you can measure, okay? So, for instance, if, if you can measure it with an electronic balance or with a ruler or with a, um, any measuring cylinder or conical flask, like in this case, okay, then it's a physical quantity. If there's no way you can measure it, then it's not a physical quantity. And just to better understand the difference between things which are physical quantities and things which are not physical quantities. Let's make again a list of the things we can say about the person I showed you before. So the height, the shoe size, sense of humor, intelligence, weight, beauty, happiness, temperature. And I want you just to pause this video for a minute and just think by yourself, okay, which one is which? Again, the, the main point is, can you measure it? Is there a way that I can say this quantity has a value, a number, something that I can measure? Okay, so let's look at the answers together. So, I hope this will not come as a surprise. Height is a physical quantity. Shoe size is a physical quantity. Sense of humor, which of course, it's quite subjective. Now, my, some people might think you have sense of humor. Some people might think you don't have. It's not a physical quantity. Intelligence. And I already know that some of you might say, oh, Mr. but there's the um, uh, uh, IQ. I mean, um, but actually, um, the IQ is an imperfect tool. And there's a lot of debate whether or not you can measure intelligence for as far as we co we're concerned, intelligence is not something you can measure. Uh, weight is a physical quantity. On the other hand, how beautiful you are, how pretty you are, it's not a physical quantity. The degree of happiness you have, already talking about degree of happiness, it's really it's quite imprecise, so it's not a physical quantity. And your body temperature is, of course, a physical quantity. So now that we have more or less clear what a physical quantity is, it's also important to say how we can represent. So every time we're talking about physical quantities, there are some things we need to list down in order for it, first of all, to qualify as a physical quantity and also in, um, as to use it. Now, when we're going to um, uh, describe some situations and we're using this physical quantity, we need to uh, be able to uh, describe them properly. So, a physical quantity is defined by the name, of course, of that quantity, like height, weight, she says, a value, okay, so I'm going to say that the weight of the stone is a given number, but the number by itself is not enough. We also need a unit, 
Okay, so for every physical quantity, we will have a corresponding unit. And of course, how do we get the number? Uh, every, how can I tell that this has this weight, this thing has this temperature? You need also to say how we can measure it. So these four elements, the name, the value, the unit, and the measuring tool are key elements that helps us define a physical quantity. And just to clarify, let's look at an example. Now, uh, let's look at my own height. Okay, so my own height is a physical quantity. And how do I say what is my height? I'm going to write the name of a quantity, height, equals to a value. The value is 192. But the number by itself is meaningless unless it has a unit because there's so many units for height. Now you could use feet, inches, um, uh, whatever, span, kilometers, miles, light years. Okay? Uh, there's so many. So I ha we have to be precise. We have to say what is the unit. In this case, centimeters. So this is how I represent the physical quantity, my height. But of course, how did I get this number? For instance, I could have used a tape measure. Okay, so here we have, we have the four elements necessary to define this physical quantity. Getting back to forces, what is the instrument that we can use to measure a force? Now, force can be used can be measured using a tool known as a newtometer, and we're going to see why it's called newtometer, also known as force meter, that's pretty obvious, and also known as spring balance. Now, I will probably use this last term more often, but you have to recognize all three of them, okay? So if you see uh, written somewhere, newtometer, or force meter, spring balance, you should always remember what they mean the same, exactly the same thing. So that tool that we can use to measure how strong a force is, okay? So, this is a picture of a spring balance. And I'm pretty sure that this picture maybe already tells you something. Um, normally in class, I will have you uh, use a spring balance, but now we're not in class, so it's time for me to show you a spring balance, okay? So we have a spring balance exactly like the one you see in the picture. But now let's make this bigger so I can show you how a spring balance works okay so a spring balance is made of several parts first of all we have this part on the top okay which normally can be used either to just hold it like this or i can uh, suspend it on top of something in order to measure my force okay so we're going to call this part the handle So let's let's label this part. Okay, and this is the handle. Okay, so let's see other parts of our spring balance. We started from the top, now we go to the bottom. This part here it's called the hook. And, and the purpose, of course, is here is where we're going to apply the force. So we can hang something from here. We can just pull it. and You can see how our spring balance stretches. Okay, so this is the hook. So let's label this. Now, the newtometer is also known as spring balance for a very obvious reason, because there is a spring, you can see it here, you know, a metal spring, and that is really the, the key tool here to measure how strong your force is. So I will label it immediately, no need to show you again that, okay, so that is the spring. Then, you can notice in this picture that there is a series of numbers here. Okay, actually, the spring balances we're using have two sets of numbers. Uh, we will be interested in one of them, which is in the 
appropriate unit for measuring force. But this part here, this whole part here, that gives you the reading then of your force is called the scale. And you can see the scale a little bit better here. No? And actually, let's put it in the proper. Let's see. Okay. Now, there's an important feature which I haven't explained yet about the uh, spring balance. And it is strange screw here on the top. And what is the purpose of that? Uh, let's see again this thing. Now, you see this red disc here. This red disc should measure exactly zero when I'm holding it like this because there's nothing hanging from our spring balance. So there's no force applied right now. Okay, so it should measure zero. And I don't know if you can see it exactly, but you see it's a little bit above. Okay, it's a little bit above the zero line. So I need to calibrate my um, spring balance or as we can also say, I need to adjust it. And this is exactly the purpose of this. This is called the zero adjust. So what I need to do, I need to turn it in order to calibrate this. So it's exactly, let me do it. So I'm looking at it on the right side. Okay, it takes a little bit of patience, but eventually the disc is exactly aligned with the zero, okay? So this is the screw here on the top is called vid zero adjust and it's used for calibration. Um, it's very important before you use any measuring tool, you have to check that it measures zero when nothing is attached to it. So to summarize, we introduce the concept of physical quantities. What is a physical quantity? What is not a physical quantity? We saw the example of forces and we introduce this uh, tool known as the force meter, Newton meter spring balance. In the next part of this video, we're going to see how we can uh, compare different measuring tools for the same physical quantity. So we will going to see um, a set of spring balances and we're going to see how we can select the best spring balance for our uh, for our task but for now that's all from Mr. Buscarini goodbye